My name is Amy Benchich. I'm 33, and I've had a mental illness since I was 16 years old. I'm schizoaffective. I work for a nonprofit under the Detroit Wayne Mental Health Authority. Being both within the mental health system as a patient and outside it as a worker for the system, I believe I have valuable perspective on how we can help improve the mental health system. Better funding and fundamental changes can make the system work to better help the one in five people diagnosed with a mental illness. Inpatient hospitals are one place to start. I lived in Northville's Hawthorne at 16, a long-term facility for nine months when it existed. I have part of my high school transcripts from the facility. That is one issue, the amount of inpatient facilities we have closed down, both adolescent and adult and both short-term and long-term. How are we supposed to help people with severe mental health issues if they have nowhere to go? Secondly, inpatient hospitals need to be standardized. By this, I mean their programming. When I thought I needed to be hospitalized, I knew Mondays and Fridays were the largest release days, so I'd purposely wait to go to the ER on these days to ensure I got into the hospital I liked so that there was a bed available. This thought is disgusting. A patient should not have to hold out until a certain day in order to get into the hospital of their choice because of their fear of being transferred into a hospital they deem to not be decent. But in reality, patients know which hospitals are good and which are bad. That's because not all of the hospitals have the same programming while you are inpatient. The one I prefer has group therapy, art therapy, pet therapy, tai chi, a workout room, and other support groups. While the hospitals I deem bad have group therapy, and if I'm lucky, one other group. That means I'm left with nothing to do the rest of the day. How is that helping me? How is that healing my mental illness or teaching me coping skills? This is why we need inpatient hospitals, as well as partial hospital programs to be standardized and receive the same amount of funding for their programming. In my organization, if we determine a person does not meet criteria to be admitted to an inpatient facility and needs a lower level of care, but isn't quite safe enough to go home, we want to send them to what is called crisis residential. Crisis residential is a facility where people stay for a few days that is secure, like an inpatient facility. For Wayne County, we have a total of eight beds for all of Wayne County for both men and women. These beds are constantly full. When they are full, we have no choice but to make them inpatient. inpatient. This is a waste of money. We need more beds, which means we need more facilities where people can have a safe place to stay for around three days to be observed before we send them back home. For mental illness, people receive cookie cutter treatment and services. Others forget we are a diverse population. Within the realm of the mentally ill, we are young, we are the elderly, we are addicts, we are the developmentally disabled, we are the physically disabled, and we are those in prison. Yet facilities for the mentally ill are all the same. So when I have a patient who needs services for either substance abuse or transitional or residential housing, I'm expected to place a 35-year-old addict in the same place as a 35-year-old de developmentally disabled person or a 65-year-old homeless person with an 18-year-old who is bipolar, we need individualized resources for our specialized populations. Also, why are the vast majority of these resources in Detroit? Why, are there more, why aren't there more SUD facilities, uh, substance abuse facilities, and housing throughout the rest of Wayne County? Sorry, I'm a little long. <laughs> This past Saturday, I spoke with the Detroit Chief of Police, and he informed me that 70% of the inmates have a mental illness. We know the penal system is a revolving door. Could that be in part due to the untreated mental illness? If there was funding to treat mental illness in the prison system, could it be that we may not have as many repeat offenders? My job title is a state certified peer support specialist. This means that I have a mental illness but I am stable and I use my story to inspire and educate others to let them know that mental illness doesn't have to define them. One of the peers that taught me during my state certification was not only a peer herself, but had also been in the prison system. She taught peer training courses at a prison to ensure that prisoners could become peers and help their fellow inmates in their recovery 
and know that there was more to life than just their mental illness? Why can't this become more common throughout our prison system as part of a standard prison funding? I just spoke about making peers a commonplace thing within the prison system. I believe peers should become more commonplace throughout the entire mental health system. They should be at every inpatient hospital, in every partial hospital program, every outpatient provider, and at every clubhouse. Having a mental illness can be one of the most solitary conditions one can ever experience. One will go through the stages of grief, and finally learning to accept your mental illness and not let it define you is the hardest thing that any person with mental illness can do. But having a peer by your side to share their experiences, which usually coincide with yours and letting you know that there is hope out there and that there's a light at the end of the tunnel can be one of the most uplifting experiences possible. I do this on a daily basis. To see the smiles and laughter and tears and hear the thank yous lets me know that my job has meaning and lets me know that my job works. It also lets me know that my job is needed in the mental health system and should become more part of a protocol throughout the mental health system. If I would have known that peers existed back when I was first struggling, I think it would have made a world of a difference. If we have a system that is properly funded and well connected from within, positive changes can happen to people with mental illness. I used inpatient hospitals with great programming when needed. I even used long-term. I used psychiatrists and therapists and support groups who made sure I knew how to advocate for myself. With these resources, my dreams and sheer willpower, I managed to make it. I improved the recovery model works using the Medicaid system. I will in January of 2017 become the 0.25% of people that ever get off disability. This proves that with the right resources, funding, and willpower, that the system can make someone independent and healthy. We can achieve this if we can put proper funding into the system and believe that others can become better. The first challenge is getting people to believe that those with a mental illness, that some with a mental illness can recover. And the last thing I just wanted to know, let you know is that I'm the uh, chair of District 13's Disability Committee. I was just appointed. And if anyone's in District 13 and wants to be on the Disability Committee, to just let me know. Is that John Conyers? Oh, it's John Conyers oh, District. Hi, so if anyone wants to be on the Disability Committee, to just let me know. Thank you.